writer and recording artist. No. I'm telling you, Grammy nominated, praise God. None other than Tony Grant. Hey, 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 All right. Hello, hello. hello, hello. Yes. Thank y'all so much. Yes. For this opportunity. This is wonderful. Amen, amen. amen. Well, we're glad to yes, have we're you. Yes, we're glad to have you. Amen. So, so guess what, Tony? You're part of our family. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, so uh, you, we've been playing this song, and it's a wonderful song. I really enjoy it. Yes. It is really uh, an awesome song. Did you write it? No, I didn't. You know what's amazing? Uh, Young man Roland Pollard, whom you guys have met. Okay. Yeah. He uh, he wrote and produced the record, and uh, I, when I heard it, I think I heard it a, a year or so, a couple of years ago, and I was, I gotta have this song. This is really really nice. And then he he gave me that one and a few more that's on the way, but oh. that one just kind of hit me really really hard because truly there's no one that can love us like God can. That's right. So, and there's no one that can restore us the way that God can. No one can forgive us the way that God can. Amen. So I, I was real excited when uh, I had the opportunity to go in and record it. And it just came out in such a beautiful, magical, spiritual way. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity to do it. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, uh, Roland is a, a dynamite brother. You know, he we, is. we uh, really, really uh, enjoy Roland. He came here. Uh, spent some time with us, and uh, he, he's a very good um, visionary, you yes. know, uh -huh. and he yeah. is a very good storyteller, amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he has a lot under that. I told him, I said, brother, you must be from Jamaica. You got a lot of cats that you're wearing, and yes. he just fell out laughing. He said, you guys are just so awesome. I said, yeah, so he wanted, you know, we, we met you through Rowan, so Right. And, and that is a blessing because anybody's a friend of Roland is definitely a friend of ours. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, I just I, I met him through my business partner, and uh, her name is Troy Buckman, who's also an amazing writer, producer, all these wonderful things. She's written books and songs and film. Mm -hmm. And when I met him, I immediately just I just fell in love with the spirit. I was like, this is like this is like a brother that. I didn't meet for a long time, but I knew I had one. Yeah. And we, we just kind of hit it off as friends and we always tease one another. Yeah. When he, when he calls me or I call him, or we greet each other with, What's up, Bishop? What's up, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, Roland, I say, Yeah, man. I say, you, you just like a preacher, man. I say, You a pastor. I say, You got a lot going and God is going to bless you mightily because he believes in helping people. That's you know, right. And that's a great thing about Rogan, man. When the people get to meet him, uh, they're going to like, wow, this guy is every bit of a gentle giant. Yes, that is correct. So let's stop talking about Rogan. Let's talk about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to Rogan, hey, Rogan. Hey, Rogan. You don't need no help. We got a brother. Tell me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. So. Um, this is just, a, a, I tell you, we are so honored, amen, to have the opportunity to interview you, and um, I am so excited, and uh, I, I just was, you know, as we were looking at uh, your bio and uh, just looking at all of the accomplishments that you have made, and so let's kick off with, you were uh, born in Cleveland, Ohio, and kind of raised in North Carolina? That's right, yes, ma'am. I was, yeah. raised, I was raised out in the bushes in North Carolina. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a, I am a country boy at heart. Um, I don't know anything else. I, I love people. I love God's people. Uh, that's what motivates me. That's what drives me. Uh, and it's so funny. I, I When I hear people read off all of the things I've done, my question goes to when? <laughs> when, when did I do it? Because yeah. I was so... I was so engulfed with my motivation of helping and blessing people, I didn't realize, and still don't, uh, the things that I've accomplished until somebody else says it. Amen. Amen. That, that's a good thing. It is. It is. It's been, a, it's been a tremendous blessing for me, and it's helped me stay humble. Um, my mother and my grandparents raised me, and I listened 
to my grandparents tremendously. Mm -hmm. I listened to everything they said, and they were devout believers of God. And they they taught me they taught me life's lessons, and they taught me that no matter how big you get, no matter how talented you are, those are things that impress people. But the gifts of God move people. Amen. So those are the things I prayed for and asked God to gift me, and He did. He gifted me tremendously, and um, even and I and I say this to young people all the time. Education is wonderful; it's yeah. absolutely fantastic. We need it, mm -hmm. but when God gifts you, He equips you, and then you get educated on the job. <laughs> <laughs> on the job training, amen. <laughs> and that's been my life. That, that has truly been my life. I've gotten I've gotten educated on the job. Uh, it's been some peaks and valleys. There's been some life, uh, serious life lessons learned. Um, and the, the hardest part for me is when I see people that desire to do what God has blessed me and called me to do. And it just seems so hard. And then it also saddens me when people have gone and spent 20 years in school to do what I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And God just gifted me and said, go, <laughs> yeah. go. And I go, and it just keeps getting better and better and better and better and better. So, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what they call that? Favor. Exactly. Favor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know, actually, actually, you know, while you know, of course, education is important. It's extremely important. But hands-on training, I believe, that's the best. It's the. It is. The, I agree. I yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I I try to advise people. Uh, that are younger, that are coming up. You know, when people ask me, you know, what is it that you, what advice would you give someone else? And uh, the advice I give them is, first of all, you got to put God first. Amen. But secondly, trust your instincts because you got to trust the things that God gave you. Yeah. yeah. And you can't put that in a textbook. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> trust your right instincts. That. <laughs> yeah, trust your instincts and understand that you are the best. You are the absolute best because God only made one you. There's not another one coming after you that's just like you. So with you being the only one, you have to be the absolute best you that you can possibly be. Be a trendsetter, not a trend follower. Amen. Bye. Amen. And then, you know, follow up on that. You, you got to have faith. Got you. Without it, it's nothing. That's right. It's a it faith is. without work is what? Dead. Totally dead. You know, so, and then not only that, the scripture even says it's impossible to please God without faith. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, and you know, I, I lay on this scripture. I, I lay on the scripture that obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. And I check myself so many times because there's so many things I see it and I want to do it. Yeah. But something say, hold up, hold up, because yeah. you might be getting in the way of a blessing that I'm trying to give them. Come All on right. now. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, All right. I like that. I like that. And that's good because, you know, the Lord always tells us, you know, to be patient. You know, and the scripture says, wait on the Lord and wait what? Patiently for him. That's right. You know, so, and he wants us to, you know, to, to develop a perfect patience, you know, yeah. to wait on God and, and to hear from God because sometimes we overstep our boundary because we, we do like that commercial say, it's mine and I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, um, you know, and, and as we was going through your bio, you, you've done some great things, you know, and it's a blessing because, you know, a lot of people just read that like, man, I wish I could do that. And you just told them how they can do it. Uh -huh. yes. uh -huh. and, and, and that's a great thing. You know, thank so, you. Yeah, because people got to start believing in themselves. That's you right. Know, that's right. Know, like that song. That, 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 that was something. Now that was something that my parents pushed. Um, I, I think they drove it a little bit too much, but they pushed it um, <laughs> because I was a, I was a, you know, being in the country and there wasn't much to do. Mm -hmm. um, um, I was that kid. Uh, before I turned 11, I think it was 12, 11, I turned uh, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. But I was that insecure kid that um, I had a lot of cousins, a lot of family members, but I was always talented 
I can outrun everybody. I excelled at sports over everyone. So mm-hmm. nobody wanted to play with me. Oh. Like, you're going to win, so why am I playing? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I became very, very insecure as a young, young, young man. And my parents would just push. You can do whatever you want to. Put your mind to it. Just do it. Don't yeah. cry about it. Just do it. Exactly. Just go do it. Don't talk about what you want to do. Just do it. Right. And then I had a grandfather that said something to me one day. We were sitting on the, on the steps, and he said, son, go out there and do everything you can. Because the one seat you don't want to sit on is the seat of regret that you didn't try. All wow. right. Man. All right. That's a good one. All right. That's a good one. I yeah. held on to that. I passed that on to my kids. I passed it on to friends. I pass on as much as I can. He said, you don't want that seat. That seat of, I, you get my age and you just wish you could have, should have tried it. And yeah. least if you fail at it, you can say, I tried. Uh-huh. And then you can talk about the lesson you learned from. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So yep. I'm, I'm that I'm one of those believers now. You know, I think when I turned 12, yeah, when I turned 12, I jumped out there and started playing every sport I could. I competed for every sport, baseball, football, basketball, track. If I could jump on, jump, get on a horse and ride and jump it, I did that. <laughs> I tried everything. So, and I excelled at it in such a way that by the time I graduated high school, I had four different scholarships. Wow. 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 Four. I had four and I was so, I just, I think back on that sometimes when I think about the hard work and really God preparing me then mm-hmm. for what I do now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. And, and you, and, that's the thing, you know, God prepares us for what he has for us to do. Yes. And he will make sh- sure the steps in your life go just in that direction. <laughs> You'll be wondering, like, why am I doing this? Or what, you know, and I mean, because I, I had to look back and I found so many different things that I was learning as I was coming along. And, uh, you know, I was always working in like nonprofit organizations and different things. And I was like, Lord, I, I keep trying to get into the corporate thing and I just can't get in there. I would know, and then not that you wasn't qualified, it's just I couldn't get into those things. So the jobs that opened up were always nonprofit jobs. And wow. so, and it was always in a capacity of, of the administration. So, and then today we have our own nonprofit organization. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> and so I, I didn't know that God was, you know, you know, preparing yeah. you know us to run our own nonprofit organization. So it's just how how God leads you into different things, and a lot of it was hands on hands on training. Yes. You know, um, uh, so I yeah, I feel what you're saying. Absolutely. But you know, I, I thought I thought my my dream was never any of this. I mm-hmm. I, I didn't. I thought singing was for girls. <laughs> I was a rough, I was a rough kid. I was jumping out of trees and off of barns, and I, y'all got that. I'm <laughs> and my brothers were singers, and I was like, "No, I'm not doing it." But my dream was something very dangerous. I, my dream was to fly a jet in the Air Force. Oh, okay. And that's that was my. I just wanted to fly. I wanted to get up in the sky. And just, <laughs> that's why I would jump out of trees and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But when I was 11. I was 11 years. I knew I was going to do something in the church. I just didn't know what I was going to do. I was raised in the church. Mm-hmm. But, when I, but I also wanted to see the world. I wanted to see how other people lived in other countries. And, and just, I just wanted to see what God created. Other than where I was at in that little town in North Carolina. Yeah. So when I was 11, though, I, 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 I had a dream. What I thought was a dream. And I saw myself on stage in front of thousands of people and I was ministering a message of God to people but I wasn't behind the pulpit Mm -hmm. so I woke my mother up one morning like four in the morning and I went in and I told her about my dream and she said oh boy go to bed that was a vision (laughs) and and, and she didn't explain it to me until the next day Mm -hmm. and she explained the vision to me and then I had that same vision again and then I had it again. Mm. And then when I when I got to high school, I started playing ball in high school and all this stuff. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a professional athlete. I'm about to play something. I'm gonna make a lot of money. I'm about to get rich. And then when I came out of I came out of high school. I had my different scholarships and I chose football. I got my, 
year, I fell very well, but I got to my second year, I fell out of love with playing ball. And I didn't understand mm. how, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, I, that I fell out of the, the love of playing ball. And then after I fell out of the love of playing ball, I got into a, a very terrible situation with uh, where I was being discriminated against racially. Mm -hmm. And I ended up losing, I got into a physical fight and I ended up losing my scholarship mm -hmm. to, to, to go to college. I wasn't really that hurt by it. My mother was hurt more than me. Mm -hmm. but, but the other part of it was when I got back home to North Carolina and I started singing with this five member group, these guys, and they would sing a cappella, and I dab would take six just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. The guy saw me singing on TV by the name of David Payton, who wrote the play. And, the oh, okay. and your very own Angela Barrow Dunlap, who lives right there in Detroit. Right. Yeah. They gave me my start in the theater world. And I when I got in, wow. called my mother. Because remember, remember I said when I was 11, I was on stage ministering. Right. Thousands of people. And I called my mother and I said, how do you know when you're doing what God wants you to do? She said, oh, you will know without a doubt. And I said, I think I got it, Mama. Wow. I got it. And she wow. said, I said, I'm going to go on the road with a play. She said, no, you're not. She said, no. Because <laughs> my, my mother used to sing with Shirley Caesar, so she know what the road is about. Okay. Yeah. And so she was like, no, 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 no. And she was she had never went against anything I had ever done in my life until then. And I said, Mom, you have to come see me. You have to come and see it. You have to see it. So when we got to Atlanta, Georgia, she drove to her and my grandmother drove to North to Atlanta from North Carolina. And when she saw it, she cried and and praised God and and then she told me I couldn't quit. Oh. <laughs> so I've been doing it ever since. I've been I'm in my this is my thirtieth year now. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, man. Well, you you know, uh, hearing your story and listening to past Dr. C, uh, we all all three of us has a lot in common. Mm -hmm. You know, because oh, like years ago, I, I had a big dream doing things. And I traveled on the road with my cousin, the, the Detroit Emeralds, way back. And I was about 15, man, you know, and I was learning a lot. And then I performed with Chapter 8, this group, uh, Mike Powell, he wrote We Need a Baker and things. Mike Powell? Yeah, yeah. yeah Mike, me and Mike grew up together, you know. Oh, wow, wow. So, so you know, it just seemed like I kept getting pushed aside, pushed aside. And I'm like, wow, you know, it was like my heart was shattered. You know, and I'm like, okay. So, and I kept on, then I was all brought up in church and and uh, the, I traveled on the road and I'm like, wow, I have seen a lot, I've been to a lot of countries and different things like that. So it, all, I got a shift where I'm like, no, nah, I want to, and I always had a thing about helping people, you know? And so I, then I worked with the Detroit Rescue Mission, helping people. Nice. You know, and then we had another vision and then, I, I ran into my wife along the way because I had made up my mind to stop singing, period, everything. Yeah. I didn't want to do it no more. I'm like, I'm fed up. And all of a sudden, the Lord was like, no, nah, you know, done what you want to do. Now it's time for you to do what I need you to do. Wow. And I ran into my wife. I tried to deny her. She, then she was telling me, all three people don't come to you and blah, 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 blah. So I, <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, I really got into something, you know. He was so, running, Tony. So, so, so I, I, I ran, I did the killer father. I heard my dad had a father and daughter relationship. I didn't know. And they had these little cold words. Hi, ah, look, you, you're looking good. So yeah. I, I caught on to it one day. And I'm like, oh, wow, they've been talking about me. <laughs> you know, and, and so I was like, and then now they want to do any of this anymore. And the things that I've done was to help people. And like she said, the outreach, her and I, somehow or another, it came together where we got the outreach and we was feeding, we're still doing it now. We're like feeding people, serving the community or helping children and being a blessing to the kingdom of God. So yeah. our thing is to put the people before us because we are right. servants, you know. Right. Thank and, you. and I tell everybody, you know, you talk about ministry. Ministry is about serving. That's all it's about. You know, 
I say, when you're willing to serve, then God gives you favor. Mm -hmm. You know, so and I'll tell him, I said, Wow, I said, but believe me, I was the one that was running. I I told him I ran and ran until I couldn't run no more. I hit the brick wall, the Lord say, It's over. It's my (laughs) turn. (laughs) It's my turn. (laughs) Yeah, so we and then we got together, we started writing songs together, Mm -hmm. you know, and then the group sounds with my you know, originally my wife uh, was the leader of a bunch of people. And I was like, oh, well, this, I was trying to run again. She's like, you know how somebody grabbed you by the collar just a minute? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, then, yeah, but you know, like I said, we all have a lot in common. Our stories are alike, you know, because God has always allowed us to do what we wanted to do. That's right. You That's know? right. And, 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 you know, I can, I can truly attest to that. Um, I did a radio interview once before, and it's, uh, it was at uh, Hallelujah FM in Memphis, Tennessee. And this lady said something to me that was, I'd never thought about it, but I always grew up knowing about it. Mm. And that was the se- the separation between spiritual and secular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And in the South, you know, in the Bible, Belt, it's like, you can't do that. You right. can't go over there. You can't yeah. do that. No, you're going to hell. But I always had this 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 thirst inside of me for seeing the world and being seeing how I can and be uh, not so much be a part of it, but be a force in it. My mm-hmm. when I when I was young, I I didn't I didn't tell you know the teacher would ask you what do you want to be when you grow up. My response was totally different from everyone else's. Mm. I never said what I wanted to be. I said what I wanted to do. Uh, and, okay. and what I said to my teacher was, I think I was in the, I was in the fourth grade. She said, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" I said, "I don't want to be nothing, but I want to say, something. I yeah. want to say something or do something that make a difference in the world." Amen. The world. That was my that was my thing. So when I got to this FM station, um, this was after my success with the R&B group I sung with, with As Yet and uh, Babyface and all this stuff. And, and she said, I came to see you in a play. She said, and I was blown away at, at your ability. And I said, okay. And then she said, let me, she said, you're not going, you probably hadn't paid any attention to this because of you, you do it day in and day out. She said, but in the beginning of the show, she says, I sat there and she said, I was, she said, I'm, I'm a harsh critic. She said, but I watched you sing a love song in the beginning of this play that had every woman in the room fall in love with you mm. and then come back and sing a gospel song and have everybody laid out in the aisles. <laughs> wow. Yeah. She, wow. Said, she said, you have bridged the gap. You somehow have bridged the gap. Uh-huh. between secular and spiritual and nobody's judging you. Wow. Amen. And I went to my room and I thought about the past, you know, the things that were said to me as a young man. Uh-huh. You can't go to movies. You can't cut your hair like this. You can't do these things or you're going to go to hell. And I thought back on it and I said, God, you are tripping. <laughs> you brought that thing all the way around and used me as a blessing to people and encouraging people that hey, he's in control of what's going on, not you. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. And that's that was phenomenal to me. That's just that just blesses me every time I think about it. Yeah. Now, now I wanted to um, because all you you have so many gifts and talents, and 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 so one of the things um, it, your acting career. Um, I know that you mentioned about being in the uh, hit stage play, A Good Man is Hard to Find. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, man, we love that one. <laughs> and uh, let's see. And then also you have done a lot in um, uh, many other productions, especially a, a lot of the Tyler Perry productions. That's correct. Uh, Why Did I Get Married, The Marriage Counselor, uh, Medea's Christmas, Medea Gets a Job. Uh, behind closed doors and so forth. And uh, so in your, within your acting career, um, it's so vast, so I'm trying to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So, you, you know, I, I wanted to play his song and then we get back to you want to do, Yeah, part. you want to do that first? Yeah. Because we're going to talk yeah. about that, your acting career, okay. and get into that because um, I, I just love the work that you're doing and um, you are one of the most sought-after uh, uh 
actors in the entertainment yes. industry, of course. And so with this new selection is that you have, no other. Yes. And uh, tell us um, about this song and what it means what? to you. Well, it's um, you know, as I said, I've 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 been in the I've been in that R and B world. I've been um, so, so so the timing, God's timing is, is amazing. Um, I did the R and B thing, and I I've been with the I'm gonna say the top R and B producers in the world, which is Babyface. I was signed to Dr. Dre's label when he first left Death Row. Uh, I've worked with some of the top. Even white producers, um, David Foster, who, uh, who who wrote a lot of things for yeah. Chicago, Earth, yeah. Earth, 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 Earth. Yeah. So now I here I am. I'm the lead singer of this white rock group, Chicago. Wow. So I, yeah, I sing lead with them now. And, and, wow. and so I, but everybody kept saying, "When are you gonna do a gospel album? When, 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 when?" And I'm very, I'm I'm picky. Mm -hmm. um, in in every way, the spirit has to be right. Mm -hmm. The spirit, mm -hmm. even with me singing with these other groups, they if the spiritual side ain't right. I got uh, I, I I a bunch of confusion and drama, and I'm like, yeah. I'm the way because the money is not worth it for me. Um, so when I when Roland, I met Roland, and I heard his music, and he asked me to do a film with him, mm -hmm. and I said, I tell you what. <laughs> I'll negotiate you. <laughs> I'll do the movie. I'll do the movie basically for free if you let me sing your song. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. He said, he said deal. Okay. So, so when he when he we did that, we did the film first. Uh, it's called Jezebel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I said, okay. Well, then when we gonna record? <laughs> we got in the studio. And we we were at his house in Dallas and we recorded. And, it, and as I said, it, the spiritual side of, I mean, when I say God showed up in the studio while we were doing it, I was just like, oh, okay, wait a minute now. This is powerful. Yeah. And then when we got, we were in Vegas and we decided to do, shoot the video to the song and it just all clicked and worked out perfectly. Wow. And, uh, I love that we used Vegas as the background. Mm -hmm. because so many people think you know Vegas is it. Yeah, right. yeah. You, you you're the center of the world, but see, there's no other. When you got all that presented to you, come on now. No other. We use that That's as right. a, there's no other. That can no other. Uh uh. <laughs> so it worked out in huge, such an amazing way, and then and then on the end of the song, you know, none of that was pre. That was there was no pre in that. That was that was the Lord just yeah. Through me. Yeah, and, uh, I just said, okay, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah, you was preaching on the end of that song. I said, oh, come on, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. I get it so much, even, even at my church. You know, it's hard for me to sing a song. I have to, even when I sing a song, I gotta put some scripture in it, right? Right, yeah, and it's like, oh boy, you. <laughs> <laughs> you let it go at the end of that. I, I said, all oh, right now. I mean, we, we we played it on the air. We was like, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know, and it was like, so we're going to play no other for our listening audience. So, ladies and gentlemen, everybody on Facebook, everybody that is on YouTube, everybody that is on Periscope, we're getting ready to play the the hit single. I'm gonna say that hit single, no other, by Tony Grant. Yeah, and remember, you're listening to it right here on the Give God the Glory broadcast with yours truly, Dr. G, and the one and only Dr. C. There's no other, I got that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
deserve a hand clap and a standing ovation. Oh, absolutely. I love that. I'm telling you, that that was awesome right there. You know, that's, that, that's definitely true. There is no other. That's right. God yeah. I, I, I can say that um, I, I get full when I when I think about it. Um, <clears throat> if, 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 if it had not been for God on my side. Yeah. Come on now. Amen. Uh, Come on. In my good and in my bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Still, if it was not for God's grace and mercy. Amen. Yes. I, I, I can only imagine where I'd be. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine. Uh, but, but I'm so grateful. Um, I'm so grateful to God because he saw something in me. Yeah. Amen. He Amen. saw something in me that said, you know what? I'm going to keep my hand on you. Yes. I'm going to keep my hand on you, and I'm going to be here when you when you get ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, there's Woo! a calling upon your life. Yes, God. You know, and no matter how we don't look at it that way, God has another plan. That's right. You know? So and when I hear this song, it, it just reminds me. You know, that there was no other that saved me. That's you know, right. when I was going through the virus in the hospital for three weeks. Yeah. You know, there was no other but God that saved me. You have kept me. And so now I'm on a, another mission for God, even a greater mission. That's right. You know, to tell somebody just how good God has been. That's right. That's for right. me, you know. Yes. And my wife went through it, you know, with the three weeks not seeing each other, talking and stuff. So it's a blessing to hear a song that has so much meaning to it, you know, and, and being a blessing to everybody. So I, I just want to just tell everybody, you ought to get this song and let it minister to oh, you. Oh, y'all. You know, yeah. And, yeah you know. and, and, you know, and, and for me, that and that, that's one of those, that's one of those songs that, you know, I, I couldn't put a, I, I didn't and I couldn't. I mean, I, I Roland, I told Roland, do what you need to, but. For me, I didn't I didn't put a price tag on it because mm -hmm. to me the message is so needed right now through yeah. this COVID. Yeah. So I said that let just let it bless you. Just I yeah. just want you to pass it on. Just pass it on. Yes, right, right. yeah. Share it. Share it with as many places as you can to encourage somebody. Um, you know, and that's that's the blessing of it for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, God said he's supply on, he's done that. Yes. You know, but I just wanted this song, this particular song, I just wanted this song to bless somebody. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And it, it's anointed. I'm telling you, it's anointed for such a time as this. Yes. And, uh, you know, like I said, when we were listening to it and Roland, Roland sent it to us and he was like, yeah, you got to listen to this. I said, yeah, okay, cool. I, yes. And we put it right on the air and put it on the rotation on the station. And, and then, wow. then he sent us the, the uh, video. So we have your video. On our um, right now, praise radio website, amen. And um, I'm telling you, it's, it's blessing people. And um, you know, because the, uh, with this pandemic going around, people still need to know that there is no other. That's right. That's In spite right. of everything, there is no other. That's right. And uh, and 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 words that you're ministering at the end of the song is, is truly anointing. I, I said, oh, I said, there he go. I said, he got it. He got it. <laughs> he got it. I didn't do this by myself, you know, and God did this, you know, so, and he, uh, you know, like we, they had that thing like the footsteps in the sand, mm -hmm. you know, and you saw the footstep, you're like, well, hey, God carried me through this. That's right. That's but, right. God, I wouldn't need to go through it. Yeah. You know, so that's why it, it, it hit me, you know, to let me know that it was no other but God. Nobody else. Uh -huh. Nobody else. Nobody else. You so, and and that's, that, you're exactly right. That's what I wanted people to get out of it. That, you know, it does not matter what the title is. It does not matter. When I say the title, I'm talking about you can call it COVID 19, you can call it pandemic, you can call it a world. Yeah. It does not matter. Right. right. No other that's gonna love you like God does. That's it. No other. That's it. No, so you know, pay more attention. Focus on that. Yeah. You know, focusing on what the news is saying and all these yeah. kind of things. And, yes. And uh, I just wanted that to be put out there for people to just. 
I remember I called Roland. I said, man, we got to release it now. It's got to go out now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Bless people's lives because I was I was hearing so many stories, and then my sister, actually my sister, uh, was was diagnosed with uh, COVID nineteen, and she was, who, um, we were nervous. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, we were nervous, but I was just telling, I was just trusting God. I was like, well, you got this. I, you you got her. You right. got her. And, and then she did something. She did something that solidified it for me. That mm -hmm. confirmed it. Mm -hmm. that she got on Facebook and she talked about it and then she tried to sing and, wow. she, and she tried to sing her way through it and did. Amen. And I said, I, I responded and said, do you see the courage, the wow. courage of this woman? That takes some courage to say, I'm going to trust you, God, and I'm going to trust you enough. Yeah. That I'm, yeah. I might not sound 100%, but what little bit I got, somebody's going to tickle somebody's ear. Yeah, and yeah. it did. It did. It tickled yeah. hundreds, hundreds of people. And I just, Lord, thank you. I thank you for that encouragement, for me being able to see my sister, to just grasp, yes. have a hold of it, and say, "Just, uh, I'm gonna trust you regardless, and I'm gonna do it in front of the world." And that just blessed me. It, mm. it blessed me. Yeah, and, and you know, Roland, uh, he had called us up, uh, and he said, "Man, he said you got a testimony." He said, "And I want to come." And do a short film on your testimony. Oh wow, nice! And, and yeah. he did. He came here, mm -hmm. and we did the short film. And it'll be out real soon. He told us. He said, "Talk about it. Don't be afraid. Tell yeah. somebody That's what's right. getting ready to happen." He said, "Cause right. this is gonna bless somebody." You know? Yes, yes, you know? yes. That's, and, good. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And to have Roland, you know, part of your life, it's it's a it's a great thing, you know, because God has anointed him. To do what he do, uh -huh. he sure has, yeah. and he, he sure he's, has. He's a blessing. So, and he's another. He's another one. He's another gifted brother that didn't. Yeah. Go, yeah. He didn't. He didn't spend twenty years training for this. He just right. on the job learning it, and God just has blessed him. I was just like, look at this joking. <laughs> <laughs> and he does an excellent job, and uh, you know, we saw a, a lot of his material that he that he did. And it was like, wow, this is great, you know. And uh, the hands-on training. Hands did, on. He, did he give you his history and where he came from? Oh yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. shared it with me. Isn't that amazing? And, yeah, and he and I talked a, a lot. You know, we had a little one, and I admire Roman a lot. You yeah, know, yeah, me too. Guy. You know, but uh, let's talk about your your uh, movie. Yes, movies, your your yes. your thing. You know, what God has. <laughs> allow you to do and to be a blessing in this oh industry. man i'm telling you all of these uh the the, the uh, uh productions that you have been in especially the tyler perry productions tell us about your experience in that and uh you know what was it like what's it like working with tyler perry in in these various various capacities well i always like to uh when i when i it's hard for me to talk about tyler without talking about how i got to tyler yeah okay your very own Angela Bell done that. <laughs> right there in Detroit. Right there in Detroit. I was in a, her play called Why Do Good Girls Like Bad Boys. Oh, okay. oh, okay. And we were in Atlanta, Georgia. At that time, Tyler was a young man. He was just getting started. And I don't know how he got backstage, as big as he is, but somehow he got backstage and we were, I was walking down the hall and he stopped me. And this was during the show. This is during during the production. And he said, he said, I love your work. And I'm an up and coming playwright, and I would love to work with you one day. And I said, you know what? When you get it together, when you when you're ready, just mm -hmm. call me. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to work with you. He did. We were, he was in um I was in Houston, Texas. He was in Dallas doing another production. And he flew me from Houston to Dallas and I sat on the front and I saw his production and I was whispering to my buddy, I said, this guy is a star and he don't even know it. Wow. And at that moment, the first production I did with him was with the teaming, him teaming up with Bishop T.D. Jakes. Okay. I did a Behind Closed Doors and Woman Dark Loose. Oh, okay. And then from there, I've been working with Tyler ever since. That was back in 2000 and I've been working with Mr. Perry ever since then. Wow. It's, been, it's, been a, it's been a very wonderful journey. I, I appreciate him for trusting me, not only as a singer, but as an actor. 
You know, he 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 gives you know he gives some direction and say, Tony, move over here, move over here, do that, do that, do that. And his thing is, if you're gonna tell a joke, it better work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we uh, because you know, my wife and I, we do a lot of plays and stuff and yeah. acting, you know, and we. Oh, like, <laughs> it, it was, it's a young lady that, that really admired what we do and she had us to do a play called Honey Look in the Mirror. Yeah. And, and yeah. man, she was like, Y'all are the hidden secrets. She said, I see something in you all that nobody else sees. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And she really blessed us and we, she told us we blessed her. Uh -huh. She had got a lot of before I got sick. She had got a lot of people wanting to have the play done in their city. Uh -huh. So when the virus came up, that just put everything yeah, on hold. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. Know, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it totally has done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it, so it's good to even have that, um, the hands-on. Um, so, you know, just uh, looking at things that we've done, and uh, a couple of um, Mike Matthews plays. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and yeah. just doing some things now uh, with Roland, and uh, so hey, you you never know what God has in store for you, and, That's true. and I know, like you said, you, you you can look and say, I I'm glad that I did that. I don't have to worry about looking back and then saying, I wish I had to did this. Exactly. Or I should I should have did that, you know, and and uh, so you know, we even though we wear a lot of little hats, we you know, uh, <laughs> pastors. <laughs> the, yep. uh, Songwriting, radio announcing, radio announcing. So it's, it's a lot people. of things, yeah. but but it's but it's all giving God the glory. Yeah, and um and just doing what God has placed you here to do instead of waiting years from now and looking back and saying, ah, oh, I well, wish, wish would have did that. Yeah, you know, what I, you know what I, I, the thing that I love is as 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 much as to me, this is why I say this all the time. As much as the internet is the devil's playground. Mm -hmm. It's also an opportunity for us as believers to be able to do whatever, as many things as we want. Yeah. Back in the day, we were limited. But yeah. see, that's where God, God, I'm so grateful in seeing how God takes the foolish things in this world to confound the wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trick just totally tripped the devil up. You think, you know, you got the internet, you got all kind of foolishness, and then here comes the Lord with somebody clever that comes up with something amazing, and we're able to do radio, we're able to do podcasts, we're able to do video we're able to do songs we're able to do so many wonderful amazing things that build the kingdom of god and bless people's lives yeah. by way of through the internet yeah yeah now, now facebook some of these owners will get they, they'll get mad at you and do some stupid stuff yeah and i had a i i did a prayer i did a prayer i guess about maybe four or five years ago five probably five i did a prayer and posted it i prayed for the world uh -huh. yeah. I posted it on the internet on Facebook, and I, I I talked about Jesus all through it. Yeah, and they took it. It 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 had, I think it it, it was it was viewed almost almost three million people, and it was like two point seven people shared it. Wow, liked it, and Facebook took it down. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah can't find it anywhere. I went all wow. I, I, I dated all the way back to when I first started Facebook trying to find that prayer. They took it down. Mm -hmm. I said, look in here. But I said, I'm sorry, I'm gonna pray again. I'm gonna do another. But that, but I did it. Already got out. The word already got out. Right. So that's right. it stop that. It was yeah, the seed was already God. spread. Yeah, for those that God wanted to hear they heard it. <laughs> and you couldn't stop. You know, so that, and they say what Rock said, that's the bottom line though. Don't go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but but you know, um, having a relationship with people is is awesome, and and then it comes with your integrity, mm -hmm. you know. So and you definitely want to hold on to that and don't allow nobody to destroy your integrity, yeah. you know, and continue to go forth with what God has given you. So uh, wow, I, I, I we've been enjoying this. Interview. I'm telling you, I, this is I. Uh, you, you know, we just feel at home and just, you know, and uh, just your personality, it, 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 we, we love it. And we're, and we're really enjoying this interview. And, uh, you know, I wanted to ask you now the character that you play, Philip, <laughs> yeah. on uh, the uh, Love Thy Neighbor. Yes. And, 
And so tell us about that character, Philip. Well, <laughs> Philip was um a good guy. He was uh -huh. a good guy. He was uh, re a retired army guy. He had uh, he had lost his wife, so he had to come out of the army and take care of his kids. Mm -hmm. But Philip was a, a patient guy. Because <laughs> it took Linda a year. <laughs> it took Linda a year to give him a date. But uh, isn't it so funny? I, 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 I tell people this story when I did, Philip, because I, 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 I guess I was just being me. My daughter, when she saw the show, she wasn't impressed at all. Mm, wow. wow. She was she she was like, Dad, you're just being you. I don't I don't know what the big deal is. <laughs> so I felt I felt some type of way. Like I'm a I can't act. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I can't act. I gotta do something different. Because she was like, I don't that's just you. You're just being you. Right. I was like, I said, you don't think I'm acting good? She said, no, that's you. <laughs> I was like, wow. So I had to do a little something different. Right. And I was then I was blessed to be able to have my, my wife was on the show for an episode with me. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was, oh my goodness. That was, I had some questions after that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, you did that. You did something <laughs> But that was it was that was a, that was such a blessing to be able to play that character. Um, I remember the day that Mr. Perry told me he said, "Tony, I got something special for you," and um, I didn't know it would be as big as it got. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't even thought about it to be honest with you. Um, wow. But it, it it blew up a lot bigger than I thought it was. I was expecting, and I and I got a bigger role. Mm -hmm. Because my first my first performance was hot. That was it. That's all I said in the first show. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was it. And then God blessed the young man to go to Mr. Perry and tell him some wonderful things about me. And uh, that was how I was able to get a bigger role. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, that's great. You know, we uh, we really appreciate Mr. Perry because he has helped a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. Know, yeah. He's still helping you, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and if it's turn to come get you, then God speak to him, he'll come get you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what I, I love about him. He's very uh he he looks out, out of the box. He's not in the box, he's always looking out of the box. You well, know? you you know, I'm 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 very I'm I'm extremely, extremely grateful for what Mr. Perry has done and what he has allowed, uh where he's gone with theater but i was just talking to a friend of mine the other day and i'm on this journey i'm on this journey now to reach back and pay homage mm -hmm. to those that paved the way mm -hmm. not, not only for myself but yeah. for mr perry yeah yeah because they they set the foundation and i i myself as well as mr perry we had the opportunity of having something to study mm. to help us get to where we are. Amen. The, the Mike Matthews, if you will, the, the, the yeah. soul yeah. man gospel. Yeah. 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 David Payton, Shelly Garrett, and I cannot, I cannot get pay enough respect to Angela Barrow Yeah. Mm. She's giving me job after job. Yes. Job after job after job. And she's believed in me. She actually believed in me when others did because I didn't have the training because I didn't have the, I didn't have the aim and I didn't have the training and she just was like he can do it he can do it he can do it mm. and then the late Lizzie Berry that was her partner uh they just they blessed my life so so I'm grateful for those those people and I'm grateful that Tyler took the mantle and kept going Amen. Amen. Continue to go and take it to another level, but I cannot forget about them. I Amen. Can't. Amen. So I pay homage to them with the utmost, utmost Amen. gratitude. Um, you know, and uh, I'm just, I'm just honored and blessed. And then, and then wherever God takes me from here, that's where we're gonna go. Amen. 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 We, we like, one day we like to get the, uh, the, the people you spoke about. Uh, Dunlap and Mr. Perry on our 
program where we can interview them. Yeah, can, absolutely. You know, oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, that yeah. Would be, we would love to do that. That'd be so, great. And there's a way. Amen. Wow. You have not because you ask not. Come on now. <laughs> Amen. But Thank this is so Thank wonderful. You. And I'm telling you, Tony, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to uh, come on our um, radio broadcast. Amen. And and yes, we are streaming live on video, but we're also streaming live audio on the internet radio station. We're 24 seven radio station. So we thank God for that. And um, I tell you, um, just hearing all of your testimonies, I know that somebody out there who's listening, who has uh, a lot of aspirations and, you know, you may be reluctant to um, to launch out there, but just go ahead. As long as you know God is leading you, go ahead and step out there and don't be afraid to do it. And so the information that you have shared, your test, your personal testimony, I know that is helping somebody right now oh yeah so um yeah. what um as we begin uh get ready to end the, our, our interview what are some things that you would some tidbits of information or encouragement to other upcoming actors or producers or musicians whatever god is, is uh you know a, a gifting them to do what would be some words of encouragement that you would leave with them i'm i'm a little, I'm a little. I'm an antagonizer. Let's go. <laughs> I think out the box, mm -hmm. but I but I think simplicity. And I hear a lot of people say these words. A lot of people say, "Chase your dream, follow your dream, follow your dreams, follow your dreams." Follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. I'm opposite of that. Okay. I don't follow my dream. I believe in following your vision. Come on now. Uh, because the dream is something that God brought to your self-conscious mind while you were sleeping. Yeah. So it has to be God that will manifest that dream. Yes. All right. So, so you following it and chasing it, you ain't never going to catch it. Come on now. Ooh. All right, preacher. So your vision, but your vision, the yeah. vision that God yeah. gave you, that he will manifest. Come on now. If you follow the vision. Yeah. And if you follow the vision, that means you following the visionary. Oh, whoa, that's yeah, how I use in the book of the back of you know, right? The vision they play, you know, the interior, which means right. wait on the Lord, yeah, Amen. wait till it comes. So, God, that, that is so great to hear that, you know, wow, and it's inspiring others to pick up the word, you know, yeah. and, and, and read it, you know, don't just go get the dust on it. Pick it up and read it, you know, because it has something in there for all of us, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and, and, and I like how you, you, you give it homage to the people that really carry you along the way, like Mike Matthews, and, yeah. you know, yeah, John yeah. Lapp, and, and yeah. we've been working with Mike Matthews, too, on some plays and stuff, yeah. so we appreciate him uh, allowing us to be a part of what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I, and as much as I, I honor them, you know, I honor, I, I have to honor my wife. Yeah. She, she puts up with me. She puts up with me. She spends a lot of time away. You know, we're, yeah. we, we spend time apart for this ministry and this, this, this message. But yet God continues to bless us. When we come together, we laugh and we, <laughs> we play and we have a good time. And so I have to give thanks to her. I don't know too many women that could deal with my yeah. schedule. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All of these things that God has given me to do. Yeah. Amen. Um, I don't know. I don't know too many. I know my mother wouldn't. So <laughs> 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 <Turn> you come <laughs> in. Let you know. Hey, hey, hey! You know, you, you know Tony, and you said a, a, a great thing because you know I, I'm blessed. We're blessed. You know because we're, we're together all the time. You know, we work together, sing together, act together, you know, and, and we, we have a family, which we teach our family about quality time with family, That's you right. know, so, and, and it's a blessing to to let people see the real side of people, you know, mm -hmm. what you do and how you deal with it, you know, and I tell everybody, I say, anything that you do, you got to have some godly time management, mm -hmm. gotcha. you know, and that means a lot, you know, so. Yes. So we, we all been preaching to everybody tonight 
and I hope they all was like sponges and receive, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, and, and like I said, brother, you, you we got each other numbers, we can stay. Yes, sir. Amen. Please you know, call me anytime. I, I, and you know, I will, I'm going to work on the mother interviews for you. All right, now. All right. Now. All right. <laughs> That's all right. All right. Thank you yes. so much. God bless you. Yeah. It's been a wonderful time for me. I appreciate it. Oh, yes, absolutely. Amen. Amen. Now, I, it, uh, how can someone get your music? I'm just going to say Oh, okay. You know what? You can go. It's on cdbaby.com, uh, iTunes. Uh, you can reach out to me personally on Instagram, which is uh, tgrant621, uh, Instagram. Or you can hit me on Facebook under Anthony Grant or Tony Grant. And we'll be more than happy to, to, to help you get it. And you can see it on YouTube. You can share it. You can take it. You can do whatever you need to do it with mm -hmm. it. As long as it blesses you, I'm good. Amen. 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 Tony, you might, I, I'm, I'm going to have to go to Ancestors.com because my family on my mom's side, they are grants. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, you might need to look at that, Doc. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hey. Yep. And, uh, some of them stay in Ohio, too. So, hey. Oh, wait a minute. My dad is still there. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, got, I got an uncle right there in Detroit, too. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we'll show me checking in. <laughs> God bless you guys. All right. Thank, uh, thank you thank so you. much, Tony. You have a wonderful day. And uh, we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Till next time, y'all be blessed. All right. All right. And you stay safe. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Put that mask on. <laughs> oh, every day. Yeah. All right. All right, God bless you. All right, God bless you, Tony. Amen. All right.